All right, and last but not least, let's do an ANOVA. Let's show how this works. Now, looking at our document here, uh, we did our independent samples t-test, our paired samples t-test. I failed to copy and paste some stuff. I didn't do all the details, but uh, basically. So I'm going to state a resource question. Now, in my data set, there is a political affiliation variable that's ordinal, ordered categorical, and has five levels. So it's very liberal, liberal, middle of the road, conservative, and very conservative. And then there was a questionnaire asking how much the offenders in the vignettes that the participants saw, remember they were sex offenders, non-sex offenders, so those got averaged together into this one uh, index for each person, which was their average punishment rating. So my hypothesis is that political affiliation has something to do with punishment rating. So let's walk through this here. Political affiliation definitely has more than two groups, so you can't do a two do a t test. So you've got to do an analysis of variance here because there's five groups, which is kind of a lot, but we'll see how that goes. So state a research question. Um, political affiliation um, will be not going to say associated with associated with punishment attitudes toward offenders I could do that I could say um, that's fine I could say punishment attitudes towards offenders I'm naming the variable I'll name the other variables here too uh, varies by political affiliation um, or I could be directional about this. I could say punishment attitudes towards offenders are greater for conservative participants. I'm not sure I'm ready to quite go on that limb yet. I mean, probably, but I don't know. I want to leave myself the leeway to do basically a two-tailed type test, although there aren't two-tailed tests for ANOVA. ANOVA. Let me control Z this and let's do this. Political affiliation will be associated with punishment attitudes towards offenders. Well, I like the varies by. Oh, I like this one. Yeah, punishment attitudes towards offenders varies by political affiliation. Describe my variables. I'm gonna I'm gonna have these um, variables. Let's look at JASP here so you can see what I'm talking about because this isn't the data set you've been working with. So let's let's do another descriptive statistics thing so I can look at what's going on here. So we've got P political affiliation here and pun.all is the punishment attitudes thing. Okay, and then I want frequency tables for nominal and ordinal variables, etc. So political affiliation that has numbers associated with it, but I'm not going to do means and stuff. I'm going to do categories. This is ordered categories. I shouldn't be doing means and stuff. JASP is like, sure, I'll do a mean. Probably shouldn't. But here, I'm interested in this. The punishment attitude scale is like the treatment scale. It goes from one to four. Four is more punishment. One is less punishment. It's a bunch of one to four questions that get averaged together. So the result is one to four. So the mean is 2.2. .2. Okay, standard deviation. All right, that's great. So I've got these descriptive statistics. I can, I don't want... I want to look and see that there are five categories. Negative two was very liberal, negative one was liberal, zero is middle of the road. I just remember this from the fact that I did this. But it's also in the code book there. One is conservative and two is very conservative. People are just asked to label themselves here. And you can see the frequencies, etc. I'm going to 
take political affiliation out of there because it doesn't make sense. I'm not analyzing it as a numerical variable, and I shouldn't. This is my only numerical variable, so I'm going to do this here, and I'm going to put it into my document. Um, oh no, for each group, no, what do I do? Oh, that's right, I split it up just like I did last time. So I better do like the split thing. So remember, p political affiliation is my split variable. Ah, there we go. Now I'll have to label these so that the reader understands what negative two and negative one means, etc. But here we go. All our statistics split up by each group. Does it look like it's going to happen? Yeah. Punishment attitudes. 1.8, that's lower. 1.9, that's higher. 2.4, it's going up. But then it goes down a little to 2.3. But then it goes up hot, highest of all to 2.6. 2.4, 2 2.6. So looks, I mean, just from descriptives, things are going in the right direction. This is what I think. But of course, there are always differences in the sample. We have to do the hypothesis test to find out if we believe that those differences might exist in the population. Anyway, I'm going to copy that stuff. And I'm going to head back to our document, paste it in. Uh, where is, OK. I'll go back and make it beautiful later. Um, I'm not going to worry about that right now. You shouldn't just copy and paste things from stats programs without tweaking them and making them readable and understandable. Explain what your groups are, and I would say political affiliation had five potential responses, blah, 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 blah. Why not keep doing that? Um, I would go on to explain there are five potential responses, and you know, uh, negative two meant very liberal, negative one meant liberal, etc. I would explain that whole thing. Now my hypotheses, this is where things get a bit weird. For ANOVA, and you'll get this when you see the videos for ANOVA, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this thing here. I'll show you the way we usually do ANOVA. You can do kind of a combination of symbols and words, but the alternative hypothesis you can't really do that in symbols very easily. So, oh, now I messed up my indentation. So that's not, no, that's, no. Um, so I could put mu very liberal equals mu liberal equals mu middle of the road equals, I could do all that, but honestly, it's much easier to say um, punishment attitudes, what's the mean? Remembering it's population mean here. Mean punishment attitudes are equal for all political affiliation levels. And then, oh, what did I just do there? And then this is the reason why you don't do this in symbols because there are a bazillion ways, okay, many ways. You can just say are not equal. Now, you, there's a lot of ways to say alternative hypothesis. At least one political affiliation mean differs from the others. Not all means are the same, etc. So not equal for all political affiliation levels. That covers it. That's fine. Choice of alcohol level, 0.05. Um, I'm going to say 0.05, um, this variable or this analysis is not likely to, blah, blah, blah. I might say something about it. it's not likely to cause um, extreme problems if we have a false positive here. It's more interesting that we should be able to discover if there's something going on, so we'll use we we'll use 0.05. We don't need to protect ourselves against false positives so much. Provide a diagram. Don't put mu. There's nothing. We want F critical and alpha. Now, F is based on two kinds of degrees of freedom, the groups and then the participants. So the groups is the number of groups minus one, 
the participants is the number of participants minus the number of groups. So you'll learn this if you watch the videos. So let me go and find our F table. Wait, did I do the F table? As I've discovered, the textbook people took the F table out of your book, which is crazy pants. I don't know why they did that. All right, so here's the F table. The F table works like the T table. It's just you have to pay attention to some more slightly annoying things. We've got alpha equals 0.05. There are no two or one-tailed tests. Everything's a one-tailed test. Alpha is 0.05. Here's the pictures. Here's the values. Okay, you need to know the degrees of freedom D1, which is the number of groups minus one. We have five groups, so this is four. So the, num the actual number is one, two, three, four, the fourth column. Then D2, there's just a whole lot of them. Um, the N, it's, it's the number of everybody in the entire study minus five. And so this is over 500 participants, so we can probably just scroll straight to the bottom and look at infinity. Yeah, it's going to be, I mean, it's not a big difference. One, two, three, four. 1 1.48 versus 1 versus 1 1.42. If you want to be extra careful, we can use 1.48 to keep ourselves super honest. Fine. We'll have F critical equals 1.48. Now, I'm going to switch us to our diagram, which looks like this. Diagram for F. And if you have to draw one, just make sure there's a lump on the left and then a long tail going out to the right. And I put some numbers here, so it's about 1.5, so I'm going to, that's what I just drew here. I drew, I drew a line for F critical here, and it was kind of between 1 and 2, 1.48, almost at the middle, and alpha equals 0.05, and I shaded that tail going off to the right. So that's our diagram. That's our setup before we do our test. We've got critical and alpha, just like we did with T, but it's always one-tailed, it's always to the right. So, back to our document here. What is it telling us that we're supposed to do next? Um, calculate F observed using JASP. Now, I'm not filling everything else. There's a bunch of stuff you'll need to write and be careful about. I'm just mostly showing you the mechanics of how to calculate, etc. So, calculate F observed using JASP. That's easy. You just do an ANOVA. Now, it's easy if you know how to do it. If you don't know how to do it, it might be a little confusing, but I'm going to show you. So I hope it will be easy now. So switching to JASP here. Um, I want to do a new analysis. It's ANOVA. Now, there's a bunch of stuff. It's not repeated measures ANOVA. It's just a regular old normal ANOVA between subjects. Now, for this, we need what we had before, a grouping variable and our dependent variable. So the dependent variable, the queen of the ball here, this is punishment ratings towards offenders of all kinds. And then our grouping variable, our independent variable, our factor, factor is um, political affiliation. There we go. That's all we need. And our ANOVA table appears as if by magic. And if you've been watching the videos for ANOVA, you know what all this stuff on the ANOVA table means beautiful look at it yeah there is a difference p is less than 0 0.001 so we'll copy this sucker and we would stick it in our document so I'm gonna paste an ANOVA table is a very specific kind of thing and we don't need that kind of a label Sum of squares, degrees of freedom, mean square. I mean, I'd probably call this, this is usually called like source. And this is usually called between, because that's between groups. And the residuals is usually called within groups. I mean, stats has its own thing. It's type two, type three sum of squares. You do not need to know that, neither does the reader, neither do I. So. I'll go through here and 0.44, there's no reason for all those extra decimal places. Degrees of freedom are always whole numbers. Mean square, mine 0 0.61, 0 0.4, 0 0.43, 
f is 22.17, which is a pretty big f, and p is less than 0.01. We don't know how small it is. It's pretty tiny, but it's less than 0.01. We usually abbreviate this. I mean, you can leave this here, but everybody understands if it's ss and ms. These, these work just fine, and then f and p. Um, yeah, it should be fine. Or you can just put an asterisk by the f, whichever method you choose. And so we didn't need that extra. Now on your diagram, f observed, it's huge. It's 22.17, and p is very, very small. So we need f and p on the diagram. So let's switch back to that diagram. Give me a different color here. And I mean, it's it's way, way out there. So, I mean, this is four, <laughs> like 22. F observed is 22 point something, 22.2, and P is a very small little tail going off to the right and is definitely less than this 0.05. It's less than 0.001, so we know p is very, very small. And so when p is small, what do we do? We reject the null hypothesis. So let's go back to our document. And reject the null hypothesis. I don't do a confidence interval. I mean, you can do it for f. It's just we don't, it's pointless. Um, so our result here, our final, con our, sta our conclusion statement will be, let's just put it all together this time, which is probably better than trying to break this particular thing into pieces. We can say um, group means we're not all equal. Now, I want to use statistical significant in there. Um, there was statistically significant. Aha, that means we did a, a hypothesis test, in this case an F test. There was statistically significant variability among group, among political affiliation. We want to work in the variable names accurately among political affiliation groups on punishment attitudes. And now P is less than 0 0.001. Now, we want a beautiful little graph. It's very similar to the t-test situation. So let's switch back to JASP. And but the way we do it is a bit odd, so this is confusing. But what you want here is descriptives, plots. Same wording as before, but now it's weird. There's only, this is set up in case we had a really complex analysis, but we have a very simple analysis, one factor. Put it on horizontal axis. Look at how beautiful that is. But we want error bars, confidence intervals. Always have error bars. This is extremely important in life. So let's copy this thing. Let's put it in our document. Here's my graph. Oh, look how beautiful it is. Let me make it no longer wrapping. We've learned that that's an important thing. Um, put it under the, provide the graph. I don't know, maybe put it above. Okay, that's. Whatever, it can go there. We can see it. All right, now, for ANOVA only, there is, oh, this is provide a graph of results. It's supposed to go there. There we go. ANOVA only, post hoc test. I'm going to do a control intro since this is so close to the end of a page. Post hoc tests. Was my F statistically significant? Yes, it very much was. So I need to do post hoc tests. So I'm going to copy and paste the table that I get from post hoc tests. Let me show you where that is. 
In other words, there are five means here. All the F test told us is that they're not exactly the same. So we need to go back and do all the different T tests between all the combinations of means. Well, that's one approach. We, we're able to do that now without uh, causing huge family-wise error problems. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that. So let's go back to JASP. I'm going to show you how to get that done. It's not particularly difficult. So we're still in the ANOVA place, in the ANOVA thingy. Uh, we did the descriptive plots. See how there's even something that says post hoc tests? That's what we want to expand. There's only one choice. We need to do post hoc tests of political affiliation. In other words, all these different groups. Just leave this the same standard, two key. That's fine. Just leave it. Don't do confidence intervals necessarily. You can if you want, but. It's just a little extra fussiness. Now I'm going to copy this thing. And just this once, I mean, it's complicated enough. Just copy it. If you were putting it in a paper, of course you wouldn't copy it because this is ugly. But let's just look. Now, let's look up here at our graph. And we can relate these things together. Uh, let me, oops, let me get back to the document so you see what I'm doing here. So let's look at this graph um, up here. You see where these means are? So these are the extremely, uh, the very liberal. These are liberal, negative one, zero is middle of the road, one is conservative, and two is very conservative. Very conservative has a big error bar, so there are either few of them or there's a lot of variability or both. Everybody else has pretty small error bars. So you can tell that there's generally an upward trend, but which of these are statistically significantly different from the others? Which of these two these t-tests would turn out to be significantly different? This versus this, this versus this, this versus this. That's what we're going to see here. Now, if we look back at all of the different t-tests that got done, because that's what we did. We just did a ton of t-tests with a correction to make it harder to find them significant, because we did a ton of t-tests. Um, so the mean difference, P. Okay, let's just highlight. I'm just going to use bold. Well, I'm going to use a different color. I can remove that later. But I want to see which ones are statistically significant right now. So that's, so this is negative 2 versus everything. 0, 1, 2. So going up here, this is statistically significant than this and from this, and from this, and from this. You know, this is, this is significantly lower than all of these. Okay, so not surprising. If it's lower than one, since it goes upward kind of in an angle like that, it's lower than all of them. So negative one versus everything else. It's statistically significantly different. Okay. That is statistically significant from this, this, and this. And also from this one, which we already previously saw. So liberal had significantly lower punishment attitudes than everybody else, except very liberal. They're the ones who actually have lower than liberal. So liberalism makes you, well, it doesn't make you. We, don't, we can't say that. We didn't do an experiment. It's associated with uh, less punishment attitude towards criminals. And then this other stuff, zero and one, I mean, they're significantly different from the stuff that came before them, but from nothing that comes after them, these p-values are not less than 0.05 or 0.01 or anything. So, no, not so much. So what have we found? We found that extremely liberal folks have significantly lower punishment attitudes than everybody. Liberal folks have higher than, than very liberal, but lower than everybody else. And everybody else is the same. Now, we know those aren't the same, but this, the t-tests between them for this versus this, and this versus this, and this versus this, those three differences, those t-tests were not statistically significant, which means in the population, as far as we know, they're the same. They're the same number. So middle of the road, and you know, like neutral or centrist or whatever, and conservative and very conservative, they basically have the same political attitudes or, sorry, the same punishment attitudes on average, although there's variability within them, and those are all higher than the liberals. So, interpret them. This is where it gets kind of weird. You have to try and interpret the results. You have to try and write that stuff out. And 
depending on what you do, you'll have different pattern of results. You have to try and don't just make a laundry list of all the things. Try and find the patterns. So I think we found a pattern here. We can say liberal um, participants had statistically now liberal. I'm, will people understand that means liberal and very liberal? Well, let's just say just liberal. Significantly lower punishment attitudes than, I can't remember, centrist? Okay, centrist or conservative participants. And I'm going to capitalize this just so it stands out. That's playing fast and loose with English. And very liberal participants had statistically significant, because again, this was the hypothesis test. Lower attitudes still. That's a short way of saying than the previous one. Um, centrist, conservative, and very conservative participants had no statistically, okay, I can't type, it's late at night, ever have that happen, it's bedtime, really, did anything weird happen, okay, no statistically significant mean differences. Now, there were mean differences in the sample, but statistically significant means we don't trust that those differences uh, exist in the population. There you go. And I'm done. Copy and paste all my JASP stuff. Well, just the relevant stuff. And I'm finished with this guy. It's just yeah, two and a half pages of stuff. Overall, this entire homework can be done in an hour or two. Um, it might take longer because you're not familiar with it, but if you're in a team and splitting things up, it shouldn't take too ridiculously long. I don't think it'll be too terrible. Right, I'm going to stop this now.